Hello everyone, welcome to Statistics and Theory. In this video I'm going to continue uh, to talk about linear mixed effect models. In the past three installments I have discussed uh, linear mixed effect models in Jamovi and uh, today I want to unpack the concept of fit, model comparisons and degrees of freedom. Let's refresh our memory. Uh, in the previous video I fitted this model in which the um, dependent variable is predicted by one which stands for the population or the fixed intercept plus two other fixed factors which are time and group and their interaction. And there's another term which is in brackets which stands for our random effect which is um, represented as one pipe subject. That line over there is read as pipe. Uh, which means that our intercept is random so it varies across subjects. In other words every subject has one particular or specific intercept for himself or herself. Now today I want to compare this model with another model, actually with two more models, um, to see which one of them fits better. And uh, model comparison is uh, quite commonly conducted in linear mixed effect models whenever we arrive at a model which best fits the data and also uh, is in line with our theoretical frameworks that model would be better and uh, we should choose that over the rest of the models. So I have already taken a screenshot of uh, this model which I have just shown you in which I have an intercept and I have got fit statistics here including uh, AIC, BIC and log likelihood uh, which are respectively uh, 1081, um, 0.747 uh, 1046.448 and also minus 500.402. Now on the right hand side I have incorporated another uh, random effect which is uh, basically the slope. Let me tell you how I can how we can do that. So uh, the way that we do this is just go down here to uh, the random effects component uh, section and move a group or subject to the random coefficients window here and the model will automatically update itself. Uh, what is happening here is that we're adding both an intercept and a slope which is represented by as you can see in this formula by one plus group. Group here um, is um, a representative of um, the slope basically. So the both uh, the intercept and group which is the slope are going to vary across subjects. So every subject uh, is f um, hypothesized to have a specific intercept exclusive to himself, herself, um, as well as a specific slope which is also exclusive to himself or herself. And we want to figure out whether this model fits better than the previous model. So um, I have already taken a screenshot as you saw let's take a look at their fit stats and compare them. Actually the fit stats are pretty close to each other um, but you know conventionally we have to go for a model which has a smaller AIC, BIC and also a smaller log likelihood. Most often scholars prefer to look at AIC which in this uh, case you can see is uh, smaller. This is 1081 something, this is 1083. Uh, so the model which is less complex and only has got an intercept uh, so far is preferable. And in terms of its BIC statistic, it's also uh, smaller because it's 1046, slightly above that. And uh, on the other hand, the other model with a random slope and a random intercept has got a larger BIC number, which is 1053. Therefore, our preference should be this one because of the fit statistics as I mentioned before. This is the first step in all analyses. The second step is, after choosing the best model, is to look at the R-squared values. There are two R-squared values. They're different from the traditional R-squared values. Um, the uh, R-squared marginal index and the R-squared conditional index or uh, marginal R-squared and conditional R-squared. They're similar to each other and I'm going to uh, briefly explain how, uh, what they mean exactly and how we can interpret them. The first one, uh, R squared marginal index, stands for the amount of variance that's attributed to fixed effects. So in this case, around 55.4% of the 
of the variance is attributed to the fixed effects in the model. Then these fixed effects are one plus time plus group plus time in uh, interaction uh, in interaction with group. In addition, the R squared uh, conditional, as you can see here, uh, is the amount of variance that is explained by both random and fixed effects. By both random and fixed effects. Um, so it's um, 0 0.768, which means that around 76.8% of variance in our data is attributed to both fixed effects and random effects, which is pretty good. So uh, the question is, so what about the amount of variance that is attributed to um, the random effects only? Because we have got the amount of variance that is attributed to fixed effects, which is measured by R squared marginal. Well, actually, as you can guess, it's easy to estimate that. We can just subtract a 0 0.554 from uh, 0 0.768. And if you do that in your uh, calculator, you'll get 0 0.214. That's around 21.4% of variance, which is attributed to random effects. Both, uh, In this case, actually, uh, it's both random, if, uh, random intercept and random slope. Uh, remember, this is not the the model that is preferable. Uh, the one that is preferable is uh, let me uh, reformulate the model. Is the one which includes uh, the intercept only, but the amount of variance that is explained doesn't have a huge change. It remains the same actually. So in this case, uh, um, the amount of variance that is explained by random uh, random intercepts and in this case, just random intercepts, is uh, 0 0.4214. Uh, That's 21.4%. Uh, 21 like I said, you have to subtract these from each other. So now that we have chosen the best model, there's another point that I wanted to highlight. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and move to the section Options. Under Degrees of Freedom, there are two ways of uh, estimating degrees of freedom for your model. One is called uh, Satter's weight, and the other one is uh, Kenward Roger. Uh, in short, Satter's weight is more commonly used. It's computationally less expensive. However, the point is, um, it may be less accurate. So, if you want to go for accuracy, I would recommend that you choose Kenward Roger when it comes to uh, linear mixed effect models. Otherwise, if you um, think that accuracy is not the first thing that uh, you would want to consider in fitting your model to the data. Uh, status weight is still okay. Uh, it's actually faster, in, in, and if your model is more complex than what we have here, uh, status weight, uh, status weight uh, may be a better choice for you to consider. There's one last thing, by the way. It's about um, AIC and BIC. I should have mentioned this before. Um, remember that, you know, BIC... Um, gives larger penalty for complex models. So BIC basically favors less complex models or simple models. Um, so if you have a complex model, now how to determine a complex model is just a subjective judgment, really, if you have too many parameters in your model, and you feel like it's actually a very complex model, you should prioritize AIC when comparing different models. It, it becomes uh, increasingly more important when you are comparing several models, and in some cases you see that AIC and BIC are telling you different stories. On the one hand, um, you know, whereas AIC tells you that, for example, model A is better because it's smaller, uh, on the other hand, um, in other cases, the BIC of competing models uh, might be better or might be smaller, and it may be confusing for uh, the analyst as to which one uh, they should prioritize. In this case, like I said, if you have a less complex model, yeah, go for BIC, but if your model is uh, more complex um, and includes uh, quite a few fixed and random effects, I highly recommend that you stick with the AIC score because it uh, gives you something better. And there, the last thing is, uh, can we also fit a model that uh, only consists of random slopes Yes, actually we can. So you can remove the intercept and you can move any of these slopes, for example, time, group, and uh, 
time interaction time in interaction with group however if you move time you see that um, you'll get an error here it's because um, there's not enough data points in this data set so Jamovi is a bit confused because it doesn't have enough information but what you could do is to remove time and just really uh, explore different possibilities I have done this before so you see, you'll see that if I move group to the right hand side and assign it as a random coefficient uh, actually you'll get uh, some fit statistics but the problem is that um, it has not converged even though you have you see yes here since we have not been able to estimate r squared marginal and estimate conditional scores um, we've got NAN for them so I'm afraid this model has not converged and another piece of information that clearly shows that our model has not converged is the footnote here which reads uh, model failed to converge so uh, um, we cannot really use this as a reliable model even if you, you move time again to the random coefficient section the model still doesn't run so can we add intercept now to have one intercept and two, and two slopes still we can't do that the best model remains to be uh, I mean compared with uh, uh, this and another option it would be uh, intercept and group I'm gonna remove time I mean if you just include uh, intercept and time uh, you'll see that the model does not converge so uh, between these two options the better model would be this one however overall among all the models the model that outperforms the rest of the models in terms of its fit statistics remains to be the model with the random intercept so I'm going to remove this again and leave the best model here for you uh, you can explore further for the rest of uh, the statistics um, uh, you can uh, watch my previous videos I have explained in details how to interpret them so this is the end of this video about uh, Jamovi in the, in the next videos I will present more scenarios I think the more data set we see and the more uh, analysis we conduct uh, the more uh, adept we will become in conducting uh, a linear mixed effect model uh, in the future I'll try to add to the complexity of the model so we will be exposed to more um, kind of uh, real life situations in which things are more complex than just uh, a model as simple as this. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.